All right, starting lesson 10.3, circle word problems. For example, one says the circumference of a circle is 14 pi inches. Find its area. Okay, well, the circumference formula is twinkle, twinkle, little star. Circumference equals 2 pi r. All right, and they give us the circumference. So let's plug that in. And then we divide by 2 pi. Mm -hmm. R equals 7. Okay, cool. Now the area formula is pi r squared. So now I plug r in. I get pi 7 squared. So the area is equal to 49 pi, and it's going to be inches squared. Done. All right, for the next problem, the area of a circle is 169 pi yards squared. Area formula is pi r squared. Okay, they give me the area. Let's plug that in. I could solve for r. I could solve for r. All right, divide by pi. I have 169 is equal to r squared. So r is equal to 13. And now I need to figure out the circumference. So once again, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Circumference equals 2 pi. All right, so we plug r in. Circumference is equal to 2 pi times 13. So circumference is equal to 26 pi. And it's going to be yards. Done. All right, on to some new ideas. A figure is inscribed Only if it touches the sides of another figure. So here's an example below here. So here we have a circle that's inscribed in a square. All right. It just barely touches the sides of the other figure. All right. So essentially, inscribed means it's on the inside. All right. A figure is circumscribed. only if it touches the vertices of another figure. So this circle is circumscribed about the square because it just touches the vertices of the square. Okay, And circumscribed means it's on the outside. So for example, too, a circle with radius 7 centimeters is inscribed in a square. Let's draw this. All right, find the area of the square. A circle, and it's inscribed. So that means it's inside the square. It's a very rough diagram. Use your stencil if you need to. All right, the radius is 7. So it says find the area of the square. Okay, if the radius is 7, that means the diameter. 7 plus 7, which is 14 altogether. All right, so each side of the square is 14. So area of a square is base times height. 14 times 14. The area is 196. So very simple problem. You just need to know how to interpret what they're describing to you. All right, a circle with radius of five feet is circumscribed about a square. All right, so here you have a square. And I have a circle circumscribed about a square, so it goes around the square. Just like that, okay? It's a terrible diagram, but I can't use the stencil on the iPad. All right, find the area of the square. Okay. The radius of the circle. Okay, so the radius of the circle, here's the center of the circle. You're not going to go this way, all right? Because then we're essentially passing through the square and the measurements get a little funky there. So you're going to do this. This makes more sense. I'm going to go straight to the vertex of the square. All right, and then that touches the circle, so that's five there. All right, I'm going to go the other direction as well. That, that's five. All right, now this isn't the most accurate square, but a square is a rhombus. And the diagonals are perpendicular, so I get a right triangle here. Right? And so I have an isosceles, right? Isosceles 
right triangle. And if that's the case, then both of these angles here are 45 degrees. So then I can apply the properties for 45, 45, 90. This is going to be 5 squared of 2. So find the area of the square. Well, that's 5 squared of 2. This side as well as 5 squared of 2. All right, so both of these sides here are 5 squared of 2. So once again, area is base times height. So 5 squared of 2 times 5 squared of 2. So that gives me 25 times 2. The area is 50 feet squared. Done. All right, simply stated, a ratio is a, right, is a fraction. Or is very often written as one. Okay, so example three, what is the ratio of a circle's radius to its diameter? So the radius to the diameter. All right, so you're looking at this now and you're saying R over D. Okay, what am I supposed to do with this? Now, how can you relate R to D? Well, you know that D is equal to 2 times R. All right, and now you have a fraction you could simplify. So the R's cancel out. And make sure you do not write 2 as your answer now. It's 1 over 2. All right, watch out for that. So that's all there is to it. That's what the ratio simplifies to. For part B, a square circumscribed by a circle, what is the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square? Mm hmm Okay. Now, notice that they don't tell you anything about the radius of the circle. They don't give you any numbers in this problem. So often students are just reading it and saying, well, what do I do? Well, just set up the ratio based off of the information they give you. A square circumscribed about a circle. Okay, circumscribed about a circle. So that means the square goes around the circle. All right, and if I'm looking at the radius of the circle, this will be the radius, right? Okay, well, if that's the radius, going the opposite direction as well, that's r. So that makes this whole side length for the square 2r, which makes this side as well 2r. All right, so let's go back to setting up the ratio. What is the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square? All right, well, area of a circle is pi r squared. Do I know what r is? No, but I'm just going to state r for the radius and the area of the square. Well, area of a square is what? Base times height. So it's going to be 2r times 2r. All right, and you're intentionally setting it up this way so you can relate one of the variables between the two areas. In this case, it's r. All right, so watch what's going to happen here. So we have pi r squared over, and we're going to have 4 r squared. Well, what's going to happen now when we simplify this ratio? r squares cancel out, and we're just left with pi over 4. And that's what your ratio simplifies to. We're done. All right, so very simple problems once you understand how to interpret the information they're giving you. All right, last part. When the motion of an object makes a complete circle, it is referred to as making a revolution or a rotation. All right, same thing. All right, when a circle moving forward makes one complete rotation, it has traveled its circumference. Okay, and if you look at the back of your yellow sheet, I, at the very bottom, I have a diagram demonstrating why the circumference has been traveled when a circle or a tire makes one full rotation. So check that out. All right, now do an example two. If a cylindrical barrel has a radius of 11 inches, and we're going to look at the barrel from the side here. All right, this is, this is a barrel. I'm going to draw like a three-dimensional barrel here. All right, but you don't need to use that. All right, the radius is 11 inches. How many inches will it roll in three revolutions along a smooth surface? Leave answer in terms of pi. All right, well, we know that one revolution essentially is equal to the circumference, 2 pi r. All right, this is a very important formula now. 
So if I'm going to travel three revolutions, multiply by three on both sides. So three revolutions would mean that I've gone six pi r. And in this case, what is r? So r is 11. Let's plug that in here. So I have three revolutions is equal to 6 pi times 11. So I have three revolutions is equal to 66 pi. All right, and it's going to be inches, and that's it. So there's your answer. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use the equal sign. You could say is instead. All right, but just as long as you have the main idea and you're able to come up with the correct number, you're, you'll be just fine. All right, for part B, if a car travels 176 pi feet and the diameter of the tire is 16 feet, then how many revolutions did the tire make? All right, so once again, I know that one revolution is equal to 2 pi r. Let's just make sure we state that in the very beginning. All right, now they tell you that the car has traveled 176 pi feet and the diameter is 16 feet. So if the diameter is 16 feet, then the radius is 8 feet. All right, so now I'm going to plug the radius in here, and that's going to tell me how far the car travels in one revolution. So it's going to be 16 pi. All right. So now here's something you could do. You could set up a proportion to allow you to figure out the total number of revolutions the tire made. So I know that one revolution is equivalent to traveling 16 pi feet, and that would be equal to x revolutions traveling how far? 176 pi feet. All right, so here's the key proportion that's going to allow you to figure out how many revolutions this car has traveled. All right, so I'll cross multiply here. And at this point, you don't have to really worry about the revs. All right, let's just focus on the numbers. So I have 176 pi is equal to 16 pi x. Now I divide by 16 pi. And I get the total number of revolutions, which is 11. All right. So the tire has made 11 revolutions. Just a little side note, you could have set this proportion up the other way as well. When you travel 16 pi feet, that means you've made one revolution. So if you travel 176 pi feet, that means you've made x revolutions. All right. It's essentially the same proportion, and you'll get the same result. All right. That's all there is to the lesson. If you have any questions about any of this, please make sure to ask for help. Begin the assignment.